it up with a statement and then we'll have questions for you. Well, it was a wonderful win for us. Um, I still got to give some credit to the entire um, Celebration Bowl staff. It was uh, a, a good week for us and uh, we've had a wonderful time here. And to cap it off with this win today, you know, just kind of, you know, to cherry on the top of the Sunday. So uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, and to have won the game earlier in the game and to be able to kind of stand there for the last maybe you know, 10 or so minutes of the game and not necessarily be stressed out like we always are in all our games because all of our games have been close games in our league uh, was, was, was awfully special too. So I got a chance to kind of look around and see the stands and that kind of stuff. So it was fun watching, you know, as the game was uh, winding down to the very end. So. Um, I guess I'm going to shut up and let y'all ask questions. <laughs> start right here in the front. Get a mic here. Coach Pew, Keisha J. Kelly, Black College Experience. Last week in press conference, you talked about how you were pretty much against Celebration Ball and you felt like that, well, since you were uh, against it, that was kind of like your punishment not getting in it. You got in it. Not only did you get here, you won it. Talk about this feeling of getting here and winning it. Yeah. Well, now, I was I was against it. I had come to the conclusion that I was wrong as all get out. So, now, it was something that I was trying to support for the last so many odd years. I, we just couldn't get here. So, <laughs> you know, I can tell you now that, you know, that we were, you know, as trying as hard as we could to get here. And I need to get me, I need to be close. I can but at the same time, uh, it was a wonderful uh, uh, win for us. And you know, I don't even know what the heck you asked me now, but at the same time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> next question. <laughs> <laughs> back in the left, Co Coach in the back, Joe Cook, 16W APT. Uh, kind of a two-part of the first. Talk about those, turnover, those turnovers, those takeaways for your team. How big was that in that your team kind of embraced that underdog role and, and got it done today? They were big. We couldn't drive the football on them. We got maybe one drive in the whole game. All the rest of our scores were some sort of defensive turnover where they had where we had a short field and we were able to punch it in that way. It was really more, you know, us using Jackson's game ball. I mean, game uh, plan, you know, to beat Jackson because that's what they had done most of their games. They had taken advantage of of. Uh, Short fields from the kicking game, those kick cuts. If you notice, we didn't, we we never kicked it to those guys. You know, it was one of those kind of deals where we could, we went, in, we came in with a plan to kind of control that a little bit, and then we just hopefully just kicked the ball back to them whenever we could and make them go the distance of the field. And then from there, we were waiting for an opportunity. Once the opportunity came, then we were able to take advantage of it. Rick Henry, WS TV, Columbia, South Carolina. Buddy, first of all, congratulations. I've got two Thank questions you, for you. Um, the performance of your defense, when you look at the tradition of South Carolina State, you've got four guys in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, three of them defensive players. How gratifying is to see that FC State defense rise up and get it done? And also, how gratifying is it to you personally? Because just a couple of years ago, the main storyline for SC State football Will Buddy be back? But you're back better than ever. And in a season where Dion and Jackson State were getting all the headlines, you come up and have this big win in the Celebration Bowl. Uh, two of those Hall of Famers were here today. Harry and Donnie were both up on the stage at the end of the day with those gold jackets on. So you can pretty much bet that, you know, that we were, you know, they had a close eye on their legacy, on their tradition out there, you know, as we played the game. You're exactly right. Our defense has always been the lead dog in our pack. And, uh, you know, we continue to try to do everything we can to make sure we uphold that tradition because it's a strong one. And uh, when you start talking about defenses, I think our defense over the years, you know, kind of match up with anybody. As far as the – what else did you ask me, Rick? <laughs> it was good. I was, it was real gratifying. Uh, <laughs> Ken Rashad, HBCU Sports. Coach, of all of the games that you've coached in your career, where does this win rank? And then the second, second part of the question is, how many more games do you see yourself coaching in the future? I knew that was coming. 
I don't know it. I don't know. Okay. Um, as far as the games rank, uh, when you've been around for 40 and some odd years, you know that they all seem to kind of run together a little bit. But I can tell you this is as big as any I can remember here recently. And then on the second one, I want to coach until they run me off at this point. Now, and that might not be very long from now, but at the same time, you know, I would like to coach at least for another year. Open mic broadcast, Joshua Davis. Uh, coach Pugh, congratulations. And uh, what, does this, what, does do, what does this win mean for the uh, state of South Carolina, the school of South Carolina? What does that mean? Well, it means that we got another positive piece of news for our university. And anytime you've been through some of the tough times that we've been through at South Carolina State over the years, and you're looking to try to add to the plus side of things. So, you know, I can tell you that I'm extremely proud that our football team has started this 22 fall semester year off with a winning year. And, uh, you know, we just hope that we can do everything we can to be, uh, 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 you know, a pleasing thought for all of the fans and friends of South Carolina State University. Coach. Let's, let's, two questions. One, let's not overlook the punting game and how you were able to flip the field. And also the three weeks that you used to prepare, walk us through that because that's a lot of time to get ready for a team like this. It was, and you know, we got an opportunity to start working on them almost right off the bat because we kind of, we just thought that they'd be the, the winner of the SWAC. So we went on and started working on Jackson more than uh, Prairie View. But uh, the punter, was the MVP of this game, without a doubt. And he flipped the field. We were, we hadn't done a thing on offense at all for the, for the entire first quarter of the game. And he kicks the ball down deep in their territory, flips the field over almost completely. And then we get it and get a turnover down there and get one score. And then another time in the game, we, uh, <clears throat> we um, uh, put in the ball. And we had a little bit of a deal where not only did he punt it, but we punted in a way that they didn't necessarily have a chance to actually return them. You know, that was the whole, you know, plan of the whole action that way. We were trying to make sure that they wouldn't know. And first of all, they had to play the fake because that guy looked like he was going to run. One time I thought he had crossed the line of scrimmage and he hit one that very long one. But, you know, that was just kind of what we wanted to do to kind of give ourselves a chance. They had had a wonderful, wonderful season of returning punts and kicks and 23 and 10 were studs. I can tell you both those guys were big time players and we was, it scared the death, it scared the life out of me. So I was trying to figure out how to keep those guys from beating them by themselves, beating us by themselves. Hi coach, this is Dawn from the Atlanta Voice. I got a chance to speak to your interim um, school president this morning and one of the things that he talked about was that if you all won, you all would try to party like it's 1999. <laughs> now he said that in a recruiting um, question that I had about um, what would this mean for the athletic department as well as the school as a whole. So from your standpoint, what does this Celebration Bowl win mean for the school and the program itself? Well, you know, it's another start of tradition of South Carolina State football. You know, we've had a lot of good times. And, you know, I got an opportunity to play for Coach Jeffries and, and all of the different kinds of things that went on when he was there. We had some great times then. And, uh, you know, I just want our time with Buddy Pugh at the head, you know, to be similar in some ways at the same time. So, you know, it was a wonderful uh, uh, day for our university, for our football program, for our athletics department as a whole. And, and uh, hopefully we can build on it and do some things to you know, maybe improve some of the other uh, facilities and some other kinds of things around there that can make this something that we can make last for a long, long time. Got two more coach right here. Mm -hmm. Donnell Phillips, Atlanta Business Chronicle. Coach, there's almost 49,000 people in the building tonight. Your thoughts on that level of support for the Celebration Bowl? Well, um, you know, I'm excited. The fact that it looks like uh, we've made another step in the uh, progression or the uh, building of the uh, Celebration Bowl Classic that way. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping that we can continue to build on the next time that we do this thing. Let's hope that we have in the 60s and then on to eventually to, to the point where we get the whole place filled up. So I'm looking forward to seeing, 
you know, just how much we can do to improve this game. Even though I think it's a tremendous game for schools our size, I would like to see it become even bigger. That's one of the back coach. Good morning, Coach. Well, good evening, Coach. Uh, back here in the yellow hoodie, Dwayne Nash with the guard HBCU Sports and Hero Sports. Let me first off uh, start by saying thank you for being my Monday morning entertainment during the weekly press conferences. I swear I got a laugh out of you every week. Thank you. But well, my you question is, yes. <laughs> my question is, can you give us a preview of what your first conversation is going to be like with your good buddies, Rob Broadway and Sam Washington <laughs> of North Carolina a and um, we've got a pack going that once we all retire, uh, that we will be uh, at each other's houses when we go to Greensboro, Sam's in charge of, of entertaining us, and when they come to Orangeburg, then I've got that re that responsibility in Orangeburg. So, you know, we just have a good, a good time with each other. These, these guys are beat up on me. They, they got me now at the point now I'm scared of them. But now I'm trying to figure out how to get a win against Sam because Sam has been really ugly to me here recently. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, you know, they, put, they were pulling for me. You know, they, you know we, we, our coaches in the league, I've heard from every coach in the MAC in the last couple of days trying to get him, you know, trying to give me encouragement, that kind of stuff. And we are pretty tight knit bunch much. And uh, you know, let's hope that, you know, some of the other guys that's in our league will have an opportunity to experience what I've experienced here today at some point. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it.